It is summertime, time for splashing in the pool, barbecues, hanging out at the beach, and maybe watching your computer overheat into a big blob of steaming electronic poo. I really hope that's not happening to some of you guys, but I think it might be, which is why we're gonna go ahead and do this series this summer on how to keep your computer nice and cool, where I show you guys tips and tricks on things that you can do to really help improve the temperatures in your computer. Some of it will be free, budget-based, some of it will actually have some money involved. So with that said, let's go ahead and move forward with things I've done on my 900D to try and keep things cool. Now, believe it or not, the 900D is actually a crap case when it comes to airflow. The airflow in this case is horrible. I mean, you've got cross flow on the bottom, you've got hard drives blocking all the air from the front, and the exhaust on the top has got to go through a thick panel of mesh filters. So it's just, it is not airflow optimized. On the front of the case, you've got this little panel here, which only gives you about a half inch gap all the way around, and then a really restrictive filter on the inside. On the side right here, there's usually a magnetic filter, which I've removed, which brings me to point number one. Fan filters are not something that have always been around, and they're not something I personally use in my builds. I would much rather trade off the fact that I have to complain, I have to complain about my computer. Yeah, I complain my, about my computer all the time, guys. I would much rather trade off the dust and having to clean more often than having reduced airflow and higher temperatures. Fan filters, Bottom line, they reduce airflow. As they get dirty, they reduce it even more, which means that the filters just stop working. The dust goes right around the filters. They go right around the fans, and they come in through all the different vents and things. If you really want to control the dust in your computer, you need to go with either positive or neutral pressure in your case. That's a whole different video. Believe it or not, you can control the dust in your system without using fan filters at all. Now, as you can see right here with my 900D, I don't have the magnetic filter in here for the bottom 480 millimeter radius. So I have nothing but clean airflow making its way into that bottom rad. That's exactly what I want. But where the real restrictions on this case came in were the front panel right here. As you can see, when I remove this panel and bang and bang, bang it into my wall, uh, you only get that little bit of gap. You see where those standoffs are? You get a little bit of gap around here, which is already very restrictive. But as you can see, I have removed the, uh, the, the little snap-in filter altogether because this restriction plus that filter just meant you couldn't even feel air coming in if you put your hands right there. And I even have static pressure fans in the front, which are supposed to help overcome that amount of restriction. So I removed the filters altogether. In fact, I even removed the filters from the top uh, of the panel here by bending the tabs, taking the top piece and the splitting it in two, taking the filter out, putting it back, and that really helped with the exhaust pressure. In fact, unless you're using the top as intake, I don't understand why there's a filter up there anyway. So remove the dust filters from your machine and you'll be surprised how you can actually reduce the temperatures in your system. My temperature came down by nearly five degrees Celsius by removing these filters. That's a huge, huge jump. Now tech tip number two, as simple as it may seem, get rid of the side panel. I've had to do this in the past. I've had old beige box machines where they had crappy little 90 millimeter fan in the front and maybe an 80 millimeter exhaust fan and just shit for flow. Now, if that's the case that you're in, literally, if that's the case you have, if that's in your case, get it, <laughs> get it. Then remove the side panel, point a fan at your machine, get like a, a floor standing fan or something and just point it at your computer. It'll look ghetto, but your computer will keep running. And that's the point. What's the point of having a computer that looks nice, but it's dying and it's killing itself inside because you live in a climate that's 100 plus degrees and you have no air conditioning. Obviously, if you have a case that has fan placement, you wanna make sure you have a fan in every single one of those fan placements. That may seem like a no-brainer, but there's a lot of you that have just bought your cases and you just kept whatever fans were in it and you didn't add any fans. Most cases have expandability with fans that will allow you to put fans everywhere. In fact, most cases that only come with one intake, maybe one exhaust, maybe one in the top, but you have room for maybe three in the top, maybe two or three in the front, maybe even one on the bottom. If you get as many fans in your case as you can, you can overcome the fact that you have uh, restrictions inside of your case when it comes to airflow. Or you can just take the side panel off, like I said. Now you'll notice I have a fan controller on here. And a common question that I get asked is, Jay, it's getting hot. Should I get a fan controller? And if you asked me that, the answer to that is no. 
You don't want a fan controller if it's really hot. You want no fan controller. You just want to let those things scream and run as loud and as fast as they can because fan controllers have one purpose only, to control the speed of your fan, which means less than 100%. Maybe you could use it to allow it to ramp the fan up and down based on temperature, but that's not the purpose here. We are talking about extreme conditions that require extreme and drastic measures, in which case all of your fans should be running at 100%. If you have a fan controller, let them run. Just let them be free, let them go, let them do their job and move air. Now, if you don't have a fan controller, don't install one. Fan controllers for me are keeping things uh, quiet and silent in the wintertime, Summertime, not necessary whatsoever. So if you've also got those little uh, voltage adapters on there that reduce the voltage to your fans, pull those out during the summertime. You'll be doing yourself a huge favor. Now those are just three free things that I recommend doing immediately when it comes to keeping your computer nice and cool. Another thing I recommend, get your computer up out from under your desk, get it up into a nice ventilated space like this. That will help with the cooling as well. You're not creating a heating cabinet that it's sitting in. That's another point. If you've got your computer sitting inside one of those slide-in cabinets, you've got to get it out of there. That, it's just horrible for airflow. Now the next point I'm going to talk about is something that is quite often overlooked. Your computer can only get as cool as the room that it's in. So if you're doing a lot of gaming, you're doing a lot of rendering, and you've got the door shut in a small room and no airflow in the room, the case can only get as cool as the room will allow. So you've got to ventilate the room that you're in. You've got to allow the hot air that the case is creating to get out of your room. So open a window, put a box fan in the window, open your door, get some cross flow. You've got, I know, I know you guys want the door shut so you can watch your pornography in peace and stuff, but guys, you have to get the airflow in the room improved as well like I mentioned, you guys really overlook that because otherwise your case is going to be sitting, it's going to be sitting in a static room that's just going to keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter, which is going to allow the case to get hotter and hotter and hotter as it recycles that air from the environment. And it's just going to eventually get to the point to where everything is hot, you're sticking to your chair and nobody's happy. In fact, you know, I, I've been trying to do some gaming with Coconut Monkey and one of the things he even said to me the other day was, I'm not going to turn on the computer, it's too hot to play games. So. You know, this is the type of stuff that I know a lot of you are dealing with. Now, if you have a little bit of money, you can consider beefing up your CPU cooler. If you are using the stock heat sink that came with either AMD or Intel, that's not worth the metal that it was actually constructed out of. Those things are garbage. Go and get yourself, now this is a high, this is a TPC612, go get yourself like a Hyper 212, they're less than 30 bucks and they're amazing coolers. If you've got a little more money to spend in the $45 range, Cooler Master's TPC612 is a vapor chamber cooler that actually improves the cooling of the heat sink by adding two vapor chambers in there on top of the heat pipes, giving you even better cooling because of the vapor conductivity of heat. It's, we'll talk about that in another video. Now there is one other thing that you can consider doing, and that would be going with something like this guy right here. It's actually kind of heavy. It is a full custom water cooling kit in a box. Now we'll, we'll do a review on this in the future, and this is obviously a bit extreme, but sometimes water cooling is just what you got to do if you live in a super hot environment just to get adequate or, or reasonable temperatures. So it's something that you may want to save for and consider. I mean, kits like this, they take a lot of the guesswork out of it. They've got these are all custom loop parts. They're just already picked and put in a box for you so you can save a lot of time and you know you didn't leave anything out. I mean, it's got the CPU block, the radiator, the reservoir, the fluid, the fittings, the tube, the pump, and even the little jumper you need to start your power supply unit for when you're doing your bleeding. Now, I'm actually gonna be installing this thing in Coconut Monkey's uh, six core 12 thread Intel CPU. And so we'll see how well this thing performs in a future video. Now, of course, this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't do some sort of selfless self-promoting. So if you guys are interested in getting an all-in-one cooler or a heat sink or anything really from Cooler Master, look down in the description. You will see a link to the CM store with a 10% off coupon code using Jay's 2K14 code. And if you guys want to buy something from AquaTuning to keep your computer nice and cool, they do pretty much serve the entire globe when it comes to availability. So chances are if you live in an area where you don't have stores available that sell these things, you can get it shipped to you from AquaTuning uh, just about anywhere in the world. In fact, I even do have a 5% off coupon code good for anything in the store, no minimum purchase. That link is also down in the description. Head on over there if you're interested in picking up some water cooling or any sort of custom PC gear. Also down in the description, you guys will find a link to my Amazon affiliate code. It really helps the channel. It really helps keep things running. It doesn't cost you guys anything to use those links, but it does give the channel a little kickback, which allows me to keep bringing 
bringing you guys content that you guys hopefully really enjoy. So now that I'm done selflessly promoting all of my links down in the description, follow on some social media, maybe Facebook, Facebook's not your thing, Twitter, Twitter's not your thing. Well, just keep watching the videos. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one if we haven't all melted into big giant piles of blobby, steamy goo. I hope that's not you. See you in the next one.